In this video, we're going to take a look at imaginary roots and zeros of quadratic equations and functions. So let's take a look at what happens when we solve these particular equations and find the zeros of these functions. So first thing we want to do, if we notice right up here, the only thing that we have in terms of a variable is this x squared. So we can just follow the traditional way of solving an equation and get that x by itself using inverse operations. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have plus 14. We'll get rid of that, of course, by subtracting 14 on both sides. Then on this side I have 3 x squared equals, and then I've got negative 19 minus 14, it's going to be negative 33. Then I can divide by 3. Again, my goal is to get that x by itself. So divide by 3, now I have x squared equals negative 11. All right, now I can get that x by itself by taking the square root of both sides. So when I take that square root, Remember, when we do that here, we have to put a plus or minus out front. Then the squared and the square root are inverses of each other, so those are gone. And I have x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 11. Okay, now, the, the negative inside the square root is a problem. We have to deal with that, and that's where the imaginary number comes in. Remember, the imaginary number is the square root of negative 1. That's defined as i. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this up so that we have a square root of negative 1 there and can pull that i out. So we have x equals plus or minus. Then this is going to break up into, let's do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 11. Okay, And we can do that, remember then that square root of negative 1 becomes an i, so our solution here is x equals plus or minus, that square root of negative 1 is i, then times the square root of 11. Now, just a clarification here and kind of how you put it together, what we want to do is have that square root be the last part of our term here, because if we have the i behind the square root, it's easy for it to sort of sneak under the square root. And we don't want that to happen because that i is outside the square root. It's that square root of negative 1. So just in terms of how you write it. All right, let's take a look at this next one. For this one, we have 4x squared equals negative 28. Again, I've got just an x squared term. There's no x's. So I'll just go ahead and get that x by itself. Start by dividing by 4 on both sides. Then we've got x squared equals negative 28 divided by 4 would be negative 7. Then take the square root on both sides. So we can do that. We have x equals plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus there. And then we have the square root of negative 7. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative the square root of 7, excuse me, break that up. Then remember this is i, so my solution for this one's going to be x equals plus or minus i times the square root of 7. Another thing to remember is that plus or minus means we have two solutions there. That's two numbers. It's positive i times the square root of 7 and negative i times the square root of 7. All right, now let's go to these down here. And for these, we have a little bit different situation. We have three terms. We've got the x and the x squared. So I have to do something else in order to be able to uh, solve them. Well, one way we can do that is by completing the square. So remember, first of all, if we want to find the zero of a function, we want to set this equal to zero. So my first step is going to be rewriting it as x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals zero. Okay. Then remember to complete the square, we want to get the variables on one side, constants on the other. So I'm going to take that 4 over here by subtracting 4. Then I have x squared minus 2x equals negative 4. 
Now, let me actually spread that out a little bit so I can make sure that I don't have to rewrite it quite as many times. Alright, so equals negative 4, and you'll see why in a second. Alright, now, remember, to complete the square, we add b over 2 squared to both sides. And remember, b is the coefficient of the x term right here. So in this case, it's going to be plus b, which is negative 2 over 2 squared. We're going to add that to both sides. Now, let's just figure out what that is before we add it out here. Negative 2 divided by 2 would be negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 out here as well. Remember, these two things are the same. All right, so then this is going to factor, and we're going to get, it's going to factor into x minus 1 squared equals negative 4 plus 1 would be negative 3. Okay, now, just quickly, how we got from here to there, remember that this would be um, 1, so factors of 1 that are going to combine to be negative 2 would be negative 1 and negative 1, so that's why it factors to be this. Remember, when we complete the square, we're always going to end up with something squared like that. And the reason being, now we're able to get that x, we can get rid of the squared, by taking the square root of both sides. So I do that. Remember, over here, I gotta go plus or minus. Then what's left here? Well, the squared and the square root are inverses, so that's gone. We have x minus one equals plus or minus the square root of, and I'm gonna break this up. Remember that negative under the square root, we gotta deal with that. That's negative one times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 3, remember that's going to be i. I could have written that right away, but add that extra step in there just to be clear. All right, then we've got x minus 1. i got to get that x by itself. So I'm going to add 1 on both sides, add 1, and then I end up with x equals, and I'm just going to write the 1 first, then we've got plus or minus i, remember that's i, times the square root of 3. So there's our solution in that case. Again, remember, that's actually two solutions. It's 1 plus i times the square root of 3 and 1 minus i times the square root of 3. All right, let's look at this one last example here. Again, another situation where I can't just go right for getting that x squared by itself because we've got that x term. So completing the square seems like a good fit. Get the, first of all, set it equal to 0. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 20 equals 0. Then we're going to subtract 20. I'm going to just go ahead and rewrite it as that. I won't put the minus 20 there just to save some space here. Okay, then remember to complete the square, we add b over 2 squared, so that's going to be in this case, b is negative 6 over 2, like so, and this would be plus negative 6 over 2 squared, then negative 6 over 2, well negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, so this is x squared plus, or excuse me, minus 6x plus 9. Factors of 9 that are going to combine to be negative 6 would be negative 3 and negative 3, so it factors to be this, and then over here, remember this thing again is negative 3 squared, which is 9, negative 20 plus 9 would be, <coughs> excuse me, negative 11. All right, then, almost there. We take a square root to get rid of that squared, because we want to get at that x inside there. Get that by itself. Take that square root, plus or minus, of course. What's left here? x minus 3 equals, then this thing, I'm going to pull it apart right away and put that i in there. Hopefully we're comfortable with that. Okay, remember, take out the square root of negative 1. That's i. Then, in this case, got to get that x by itself again, plus 3 plus 3, and our answer in this case is going to be x equals 3 plus or minus the i 
times the square root of 11. All right, so imaginary roots and zeros of quadratic equations and functions. If the x squared term is the only variable, so a situation like this where we didn't have the x, we can just get it by itself like we've done solving other types of equations and use a square root to get that x by itself. Then remember if we end up with a negative under the square root we can pull out that square root of negative 1 that is our i, that's the imaginary unit. Then just simplify. Don't forget when you take the square root of both sides we have to bring in that plus or minus. Sometimes we might have to complete the square but again when we get that square root with the negative under, pull that out for the i, and off we go. Hope this video was helpful. Keep working hard on your math. You can do it.